Welcome to our weekly maritime blog. I'm Corey Ransom with International Maritime Security Associates. This week, we have a special guest who's going to be talking about the upcoming Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. So if you guys are viewers of our blog, you see every once in a while we have interviews, and today we have a special guest on with us. We have the opportunity today to interview Phil Purcell, who is the CEO and president of the Marine Industries Association of South Florida. And today we're talking boat show. We've been talking about things happening in the large yacht industry, in the marine industry, COVID related. Uh, about a week ago, the Broward County Commission approved to have the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show go forward, which is the largest in-water boat show in the world. I've been attending the boat show probably for 15 years and have seen amazing changes in the boat show over that uh, last 15 years. So we thought we'd take the opportunity and speak to the man who's in the know about everything boat show. So we appreciate you taking time with us today, Phil. And we are socially distanced here. Yep. So that uh, we, we have masks meet, here, but we don't need them because we're right. distanced, correct? Right. So the first question I have for you is, is what, uh, with the city and the county approving the boat show to go sure. forward, what are you hearing now as far as feedback from vendors and potential vendors and people who have been part of the show? So once again, thanks for doing this and, and having us on here. Um, so it, it kind of even starts a little bit before that, if you don't mind me kind of jumping sure. in there a sure. little bit. And so, the, you know, the city and the county, this has been an ongoing process of education of ourselves and ongoing process of education of the electeds and our community as a whole. And so we're the second largest community in, in, in Florida. We're the sixth largest metropolitan area in the country. And COVID, you know, definitely harmed a lot of people, no doubt sure. about it, across this world. And that said, you know, we're always looking for solutions and best practices to how do we, you know, no matter what it is, if a hurricane hits, what are we going to do? How are we going to get back on our feet as an industry? And if you've been a part of the industry forever too, you know we're a resilient bunch and we always look towards solutions, follow rules, right. and, and figure out best practices. So we started looking at what was going on in, at Disney World, what was going on at Universal. And Universal opened, it's on 108 acres, right. it opened June 5th. Disney World's on 107 acres. It opened July 15th, and they see anywhere from 10 to 30,000 people a day. Actually, last Sunday was the first 30,000 hit at Disney, and they've been doing it successfully following social distancing, masks, temperature checks, sanitation, all those things that we're gonna apply to. And so when you, got a, when you have a partner like Informa, which is the biggest trade show producer in the world, that helps. And so they're in every country. They're, they produce more B2B shows than anyone in the world. Right. And so they've been at the, at the front and center of this, whether it was in Vegas or globally, following GBAC standards, following best practices, and did this All Secure program. So as we started working through the All Secure program, we started talking with the electeds about the possibility, knowing that county to the north of us is doing this successfully since early June right. and mid-July. And so by doing that, people need information, people need facts, and that's what we gave them. Good information and facts, nothing politically based. Again, I believe in the mask. If the cost of doing business is to wear a mask, wear a mask, if that's, right. if that's it, I mean, come on. And so, because none of us know when the back end is. So we educated the local uh, electeds, we worked with them to, for best practices, we widened docks, we've added entrances. I mean, there's a host of things that will continually get tweaked as we work towards the show. But I think we've got a really good, safe platform, because if it wasn't, we wouldn't do it. Right, and we've seen a lot of that just on, if you follow the Marine Industries Association, and we'll have links to you guys' social media Great. in the comments in the links section down below so you guys can follow them. But you guys have been putting out updates for quite a while and putting out information about here's the changes that we're going to see to the show. Here's the things that, are, that we're proposing to do to make this, uh, you know, a much safer show. So that's why, you know, with the vendors, have you started to see vendors start to respond to that to say, hey, you know what, we see what you guys are doing and think that this is going to be a safe venue for us to be, you know, to be a part of? So I'll answer that two parts. So the PSAs that you're talking about, that's a local person that works in one of the yards that was kind enough to donate her time. Our team uh, works with Media Lab and, and produce the PSAs for us. Okay. And so by doing that, we learned a long time ago, listening to the CEO of AT&T talk, which is why we did Salty Jobs, a video series, right. which was videos of how people transfer and, and gain knowledge. And so we thought with the PSAs, instead of reading documents because people get ADD real quick, um, <laughs> let's keep them short, sweet, and to the point, and let's roll these out. And so we've just released a second one. We'll be releasing another one hopefully by the end of the week. And so the vendors then, they respond to that. They see that people are taking this seriously, what it's going to look like, how we're going to do it. 
you know, as simple as AC, you know, for, for a tent as an example, as, as simple, and some of the vendors are in tents and some of them say, I'm not going in a tent. Okay, well time out. Let me just walk you through why maybe you should consider differently. And I'm not advocating that you do it. If you don't feel comfortable, don't come to the show. That, right. that would be my argument. But the reality is you're going to Publix, you're going to Home Depot or whatever your grocery store is. You're going to a Walmart, you're going to a mall, whatever it may be. Some people are getting on planes. The reality of it is, as an example, a grocery store changes its air once every six hours in today's world. Uh, Home Depot, probably the rest. And, and, and please don't, not necessarily Home Depot, big box stores as a whole. Sure. But my point is people are doing that today and they know what it feels like to walk through a grocery store and stuff and, and get uncomfortable but they're they're doing their marketing needs and their, and their needs so the tents our tents as we move forward will circulate there every hour it will have HIPAA filters in it also so we're taking it to the highest standards because when Informa does this they want to get it right so they can roll this out God forbid we don't know the back end of COVID Palm sure. Beach show Miami show other boat shows and other events and these can be best practices for everyone right and like you said you've looked at what are other big venues like Disney World and Universal Studios, what are they doing and yeah. how are they doing it, but how's the grocery store and everybody and what's the best practice to be able to get that done to make people feel comfortable? Yeah, and you think of Flibs, it's 90 acres, over 80% of it's outdoors, so again, it's a, it's a really uh, great setting to go ahead and restart the local economy and our industry. We were blessed as an industry, we got to remember, when this hit, everyone was putting 08 rules in place, right? Financial crisis, and, and we're still in a financial crisis probably, but the reality of it is no one knew what the COVID rules were gonna be. But we didn't, we sure the heck, no one sat in the mirror in mid-March and goes, my business is gonna be the best on record this year. <laughs> right. I promise you. And so we've been blessed, but then, you know what? Our obligation to the community is, this show delivers a 1.3 economic benefit to the state. Then our obligation as a community that's been blessed, and doesn't mean it hasn't been harmed, is to give back to the community. That means hotels, restaurant workers, Bill Walker behind us with Water Taxi. Think of his staff, what happened to it? He's in that r most recent PSA. When people come to the show and someone gets on that water taxi, it's wiped down. When they get off, it'll be wiped down before the new people board. These are the standards that may be in our lives for a heck of a long time or permanently. Right. With the show, one of the big draws to the show has been the size and the number of really large yachts. Yeah. I remember when I first started going to the show, if you saw a boat that was 120, 130 feet. It was a big boat. Like, oh, that's a huge yeah, boat. Yeah, And big now boat. you're seeing boats that are almost 200 or even you know, bigger, bigger, bigger. In, in some cases just because of the location. What are you guys seeing as far as the response from the large yacht side um, with yachts saying, hey, you know what, we see what you guys are doing and we want to be a part of the show. Sure, so we're getting a good response. And, and, and again, we don't know which ones will be there, but we know they've been contacting. We know America's going to get a big bump here to begin with, which large yachts that want to come here, because there is some confusion in Europe in terms of you have different countries, different rules. That's why Cannes got canceled and Monaco got canceled. So not because of lack of interest, it was because you couldn't get to it. You had a quarantine for 20 days and it was and it was at a different time, even though it's a month ago. Things, you know, the positivity rate in Broward County is down in the you know mid three percent range, I believe. So it's 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 the same thing there. Uh, I think the large yacht community, someone will say, well, an owner doesn't want uh, someone walking on his boat. Well, first of all, they're screened before they get on the boat. They already put booties on. You put a mask on, the crew opens and closes most of the cabinets. So either you're going to adapt to this environment because luxury homes are being shown and sold. The luxury boats, the brokers are still showing the boats outside of a show. And so again, let's adapt and, 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 and give back to the community and, and make sure our industry may, remains strong. From the perspective of the show, I know there's a lot of parameters that you guys are looking at as far as we move forward. You mentioned just a second ago, the number of, of positives here in, in Broward County. As we look at the numbers in the state of Florida, start to slowly trend down now. Is there any type of, of checkpoints or parameters that you guys would look at or the counties put forward to be able to say, hey, if we see this or this happen, we need to reconsider the show going forward. Are there things that you guys are putting in place or looking at to kind of make a decision? Or now is it like, hey, with everything we have, the show the show's gonna go forward? Obviously what we don't know, we can't predict. Sure. So if there's something that we don't know that comes up out from left field, it could be a hurricane. Let's be honest with you that. So we'll always make an amendment if, if, if need be from that standpoint.
with the with the show and with everything happening I know one of the concerns that people have are, are liability. Is this, sure. is this another piece that you guys have had to put in place that you haven't had to do in the past to say, okay, we need to look at our insurance and liability to be able to provide protection if there's some kind of issue or something happens. So if you have pandemic liability insurance, let me know where you get it in general. <laughs> and act of God insurance would be the other. So if someone can insure that, that'd be great. But we're not treating this the same as you would a hurricane. Pandemic's a pandemic, it's global. No one is liable for the pandemic. Right. And that's what I, a lot of people say the same thing. Hey, we, you know, if you know where you can <laughs> yeah, get the let pandemic, me, let me know where it exists. Please, please let us know. <laughs> um, with what do you expect from a size perspective uh, of this show this year compared to what the show's been in last year? Do you, do you think, hey, we're going to see, you know, it's going to be 20% smaller or it's going to be the same? What are you guys predicting kind of at this point for the size of the show? So whatever the crowd's going to be, we're going to manage it to the rules that keeps everyone safe. Sure. And so it's a ticketless system that has a real dashboard that we know who's on campus. So that's a nice thing. We know pretty much to the, the, to the, you know, the one person who's on campus, and we'll track it as people enter and exit. That said, um, historically, as you know, it's 100,000 people over yep. five days. Do, I, do we expect that? No. Uh, but the reality of it is what we have to remember when we hear these numbers, 50% are from Florida of the attendees, 40% are domestic, and 10% are other. So the other is not going to be here. We know that. But the reality of it is if it's a European company or an Asian company that produces boats, they have representatives here and they have offices here. So odds are they will be here in some capacity. If they choose not to, then they choose not to. That said, uh, we know that people are, there's a pent-up demand to do things outdoors. We know boating, you know, of, when the GDP, when they announced, you know, it was down 30%, the bright spot in this is recreation, which is 2.2% of the GDP, is up. Right. You know, I don't think it's going to, level out the, the other drop. But the point is people really have embraced this and, and hey, we're the largest state in the country for boats registrations. And we know from documented and foreign flag boats, same thing. So um, I think it'll be a good show because at the end of the day, our, the, if you look at what's going on in the boating community and stuff, people see the value in what our industry brings to their lives. The, well, the marine industry is one of the largest industries here in South Florida. It is. But also throughout the rest of the state. So this is, uh, the economic impact is huge, and not just the show, but the marine industry, you know, year in and year out. As you look on, you know, AIS and, and some of the local cameras here, you see a lot more large yachts now coming into South Florida from Europe, from the Northeast. So you still kind of see that same yacht movement um, that we would see in normal years ahead of the show. So it's, it's pretty interesting to see that. Is there anything else, Bill, that you'd like to add or, or like to like to put forward? Yeah, the only thing I would say, you know, it's really industry, it's real easy in any industry to support things when things are good, right? It's a no-brainer. But when you get uncertainty or you get disruptive things or you get uh, negative things, it's, and, and you know that it can be done safely because you're out in the world to begin with doing things. And people are visiting people's businesses, and, and just like we hear hammers over here, people are working and they're doing it safely. Uh, I would say challenge yourself to participate in an industry that this isn't just about us. It's about the community here, and it really means a lot. Our partners in hospitality and hotels and bars and everything else are, are really hurting, and, and there's no end in sight to that hurt. And so I've stayed in some of the local hotels recently, and they've done a really good job, make you feel secure, make you feel safe. They're wiping down those handles. They're, you know, the pens, you use a pen, you throw it away when you sign. Uh, you know, best practices. So I think we all can learn from this show and the best practices that we're gonna to bring to the table, and we're gonna to continue to do so in a positive way for the industry and the community. All right, well, thanks for taking the time to, Thank you. Uh, to have a chat with us today. And we'll definitely look forward to seeing you at the show. Can't wait, look forward to seeing you there. Thank thanks. you.